still is uh, the very hard morning. I'll read statement, this statement above all, all of us in Azmio. Azmio La Moja One Kenya Coalition Party Statement. Um, entitled, We Strongly Condemn uh, the Sponsored Violent Protests and Support the Public Demands for the Resignation of Ruto Regime. Good morning and thank you members of the press for joining us today. As Mela Omoja One Kenya Coalition Party is deeply concerned about the recent increase in violence during the Gen C inspired protests. In the, in the last two weeks, Gen C has inspired the majority of disenfranchised and disillusioned Kenyans to exercise their constitutional rights to, to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to petition. They continue to do so in a manner that has captured the attention not just of Kenya, but the region, Africa, and indeed the whole world. In the typical fashion of a tyrant, the Ruto regime attempted to silence their voices by intimidation, arrests, abductions, and hijackings. This did not work, and indeed it shall never work. According to the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, local and international media, the police executed a shoot-to-kill order that extinguished 41 young Kenyan promising lives with over 300 Kenyans admitted to hospitals with gunshot wounds. We also note that the youth raised their demands from hashtag reject the finance bill to hashtag Ruto must go. Ruto and his henchmen sponsored goons infiltrated with the sole intention of destabilizing the continued peaceful protests. These disgraceful criminal and illegal activities violate the right to peaceful protest as provided for under Article 37 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Despite these perpetuated horrors, the young people have continued to march our streets, determined to drive and realize meaningful change for themselves, their families, and their country. We have observed that the intention of yesterday's well-organized, coordinated, and state-sponsored chaos was to undermine and denigrate the Gen Z-inspired nationwide nonviolent protests. Looting was intentional. The destruction was planned. The touching of public and private property worth billions of shillings was carried out in collaboration with the already corrupted security forces in the full glare of the media and indeed in touch international media as well, as well as the onlookers. We also note that despite a court injunction prohibiting the use of live ammunition, tear gas and crude weapons to disperse protests, Police continue to deploy arbitrary gunfire, resulting in innocent deaths and injuries. To restore peace in the country, we demand that the police act swiftly in identifying and apprehending all the violent and criminal elements that infiltrated the peaceful protests. There are many questions that Gen C, Azmio, and the world have, the two most significant of which are why is Ruto, through his henchmen and thugs, hiring goons to destabilize constitutionally protected protests, causing chaos and mayhem? Is the goal to declare a state of emergency and suspend the constitution? Given Ruto's blatant mishandling of the economy through punitive tax policies, increased domestic and foreign, foreign borrowing, runaway corruption, ethnic and tribal public sector hiring and astounding capacity to, to splurge on domestic and foreign travel and other luxuries, increase unemployment and high cost of living, the growing dissatisfaction the Kenyan public was to be expected. Generation Z is tired and Kenyans are tired 
The slew of lies has left the hustlers, quote unquote, distraught and traumatized. Kenyans have had enough of Ruto and are demanding that hashtag Ruto must go today, not tomorrow. To expedite the people's wishes, as mayor demands that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Amendment Bill 2024 be immediately signed into law. We are aware that this bill has been sitting on uh, Ruto's desk for days now and the Kenya Kwanzaa dictatorship is reluctant to sign it into law. As a coalition, we demand, we, we call out to Ruto and demand that he assent to this essential bill that allows citizens to hold their representatives in the legislature accountable. But there the constitution says you want to withdraw your member parliament, you have to wait for two years, the two years are coming to, to an end on the 9th of August. So really this is timely. We have officially, through our constituent parties, parties mechanisms, put on notice all as mere legislators who went against the wishes of their people. We are supporting the call for their recall. We continue to offer our condolences to the families of all those who lost their loved ones from the police bullets. We also wish those admitted to different hospitals quick recovery. We also note with concern the intention to divert the public attention from the real issues by purporting to adjust the salaries of senior state officers members of parliament, members of county assemblies, and governors upwards at a time when the country's economy is not doing well. We urge our members to reject the salary increments. We call on all Kenyans to unite and defend the values of justice, democracy, and peace for which this country has been known. As a coalition, we are steadfast in our commitment to advancing the interests of every Kenyan citizen. Finally, it is time for Ruto to take responsibility for all his actions. He has blood on his hands and he should go to allow for a small transition of power. Thank you and may God continue to bless our country, Kenya. I can only very quickly... Sorry, we have two members of parliament, the leaders actually, the leadership of parliament both Honorable uh, Wandai and Honorable Mbui, the leader and the deputy, respectively. Although they call them minority in that parliament, we never accepted the reality that they are not the majority and the deputy majority, respectively. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wandai. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Excellency. Uh, I just want to uh, clarify to the, to the nation, really, that uh, first and foremost, it is uh, a matter of fact that the Gen Z and indeed the public have been calling for the reduction in salaries paid to senior state officers and public officers, including members of parliament. And therefore, it would be insensitive for us as members of parliament to accept any purported salary increment amidst the rage that is out there. As a matter of fact, again, I want you to go on record that I uh, together with my deputy, Honorable Bumbui, have rejected in totality the purported salary increment uh, by the SRC. I think we need to give you a and, uh, and uh, we are asking the National Treasury to reallocate that money towards employing the JSS teachers, uh, towards employing uh, health workers, and in fact to help, towards helping the youth who are out there struggling to get uh, gainful employment. Uh, I'll be, of course, uh, together with my deputy, uh, uh, calling upon my colleague members to follow suit. Thank you very much. Uh, well Thank done. you. Thank you. If there's something my colleagues may want to add, but you may have noticed that uh, over the weekend, while in Kitui, I did call for um, the possibility of a snap election and actually gave... Um, comparison between Kenya and what is happening else in the region. When the French President Macron realized that his party lost majority during the recent European elections, he called for a snap election. The French are on to that. Tomorrow, the 4th, 
uh, Prime Minister of the UK, uh, Mr. Sunak, also called for elections, really literally snap elections, on July, on, yeah, July the 4th, all over the UK. This is a moment for Kenya. But that's why we are calling for very quick enactment of the, of the uh, IBC uh, Amendment Bill 2024. So at least there may be a, a possibility, assuming the youth in this country <laughs> will allow that opportunity to happen. Um, so th that's one of the things that we, we made very clear over the weekend. And again, um, we, we looked at what happened in Parliament, the desecration of Parliament. There's blood right outside the entrance to Parliament. And we suspect, I, I've never gotten this confirmation, the young man who sat on the Speaker's chair was, uh, was brought down. Blood right in the chamber. How in all honesty will members of Parliament want to sit in a place like that? These are some of the questions that we must ask as leaders. Um, but, Mishma Eugene, if there, any questions? if there are questions, I can deal with them. You know, you can step out a bit and, and speak so up. We can hear you. You just come right here. Okay. So we can hear you. Yeah, yeah because the media actually, yeah, so the media can focus on you. The African governance architecture under the African peer review mechanism gave a report on, on governance and they highlighted these particular issues on, on youth, on unemployment, on, on various other things. And there's also a plethora of, of issues within this particular report. Are you calling for a transition committee? And this particular transition committee, who do you have in mind as, as a new? Transition committee at the national level? Yeah. That is where the institu if the institutions... Perhaps also considering the youth are also disgruntled with these particular institutions to include parliament and perhaps the judiciary. And that can be witnessed by the burning of parliament and the burning of the judiciary. So, what can you say about that? That is a lot of food for thought, but... Jeremiah, <laughs> I think you have given some thought to your <laughs> No, no. <laughs> All right, let me, let me sure. just... Yeah. Um, uh, clearly, when uh, the Generation Z it started with the Reject Finance Bill, there are those who had estimated their resolve. And what we have before us now is a hashtag Ruto must resign. What we hold as Azimio also is that um, the executive plus the legislature should give way so that we can be able to get a new start. We need radical reforms in the country. We do not want uh, cosmetic application. We actually need a radical, the constructive surgery of the institutions that have been affected. And um, with this, of course, we will be inviting even the judiciary to look at um, the possibilities of helping us through this transition. But it is an issue that needs to be processed by us properly so that we are able to come up with an idea or a suggestion that will ensure that the country moves on. What we do not want is the country to go the Somalia way. But we are, we are certain that we cannot be able to live longer, any longer, with William in power, uh, with uh, William and his cabinet in office, and equally uh, with an uh, parliament that have been impeached. So we have provisions in the constitution you can look at Article 134 all the way to Article 146, and we need to interpret them a little, a little bit more liberally so that we can be able to get ourselves out of where we are. And it is possible uh, for us to uh, transit from where we are to our next uh, system, which is more inclusive and perhaps uh, one that can help us navigate through the difficulties that we are in. The only other thing that I can also add is the issue of... Uh, financing. There is a struggle uh, with the Ruto to try and assign financing to individuals all over. The Generation Z or Generation Z were being financed by their parents. Basfair, Pesa Kunyo Chai, Pesa Kurudi Nyubani, Bados, that is the financing that was being done by parents. So if you are looking for who was financing, go for the parents. 
stop uh, scapegoating and uh, stop hiring goons, like it has been said. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Another yes. question, or we probably end it up there. There's one on this side. I think you better be seen by the colleagues. You think? Yes. These are days of absolute transparency. What do you think? You will yeah. not ask a question in secret.